In the woods is where 69-year-old Rick Patton lives and goes to work. I should have a sign outside, huh? But Rick has never needed one. It's all word of mouth. Because his craft does all the talking. Okay. All right. They show it to their buddies and, wow, where the hell did you get that? Well, there's this, there's this guy that lives in Emmaus. Who makes handmade, custom-made fishing rods from his shed. I love this. Jazz fills the room until the sound of hard work <laughs> drowns it out. He's not just building these with his hands, but with heart, too. I feed my soul. And his passion for detail. It's special walnut. Oh, this is actually turtle shell. I mean, it doesn't help you catch fish, but it sure as hell does look nice. It's not just how it looks. For Patton, it should feel like your own. Seven. Seven threads. So he makes it that way. When they see their name in thread, it's like, holy crap, this is my rod. It's got my name on it. You know? He stitched names of people you'll never know, men who just love to fish, and names we all know. Reeling in interest from racing legend Mario Andretti. I wove a cross checkered flag. It took me about nine hours to do George H.W. Bush presidential seal. I put that on the back of the one rod. A president, country music star. Kenny Rogers. Each as special as the person it's for. I treat them all the same. Even though they're all different, he spends hours. It's a lot of patience. But this passion he picked up years ago, in 77, the year he got married. That's why I'm out here a lot. He'll tell you it doesn't feed the family, but that's not why he does it. I do it just for the hell of it. But if you are fishing for a new rod. I also have easy payment plans. Jamie Stover, 69 News. Many celebrated Father's Day yesterday with their children. We're sharing the story of a father who's close to us here at 69 News. We do want to warn you, some of the video may be a bit unsettling. Here's Hillary Lane. Every day, you welcome us into your living rooms as you tune in to watch our broadcasts. Behind the scenes, there are dozens of people working hard to make sure our programs hit the airwaves. You may never get to see their faces, but to us, their family. So we were so excited when one of our own told us he was expanding his family. Here's his story of hope, heartbreak, and healing. They say a father's love. I really want to be a dad. Is a love like no other. We were so excited. Stand by cold open. And us here at 69 News were so excited when our technical director, Israel Alejandro. Three, two, one. Told us last July that he and his wife were expecting six months after their first pregnancy had ended in a miscarriage. We're going to be parents. Israel and his wife, Shali, documented the journey as they went to doctor's appointments. What's he doing right now? And we shared in their excitement during big milestones. It was almost unreal hearing his heartbeat for the first time. It was like bum, 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 bum. Listen to the baby's heartbeat. And we also felt their heartbreak. There were some concerns that the doctors had. Israel and Shali learned of the unimaginable. A rare genetic disorder that's called trisomy 13. One percent of babies diagnosed with trisomy 13 live to see their first birthday broke my heart at first. I was praying so hard every day that, you know, God would give us a miracle and that our son would live and there'd be nothing wrong with him. With their faith at the forefront, they decided to give their little guy the name Job after Job in the Old Testament, who was faced with many trials but never lost his faith. And these two parents never lost theirs. The doctors had said it's possible um, that he could live a few weeks or maybe months. So these two try to maintain a sense of normalcy. There's one tomato soup, one Italian sausage. And did what any expecting parents do, baby showers. And look at these, daddy's best buddy. Installing car seats. And they created a nursery. But the joy of this pregnancy came to a screeching halt at 38 weeks. I found that Job's heart had stopped. Their little baby boy had passed away. Our hearts were just torn apart because we had made it so far 
We were at 38 weeks that day. Shali was induced and went into labor in early March. Their pastor, friends and family came to the hospital from near and far. We all prayed together. Continue to strengthen Shali and myself. The doctor told her, push mama. And out came Job. And when I finally saw my son for the first time with my own eyes, everything else just disappeared. They say a father's love is like no other. He had a cleft palate. He had 12 fingers. But none of that mattered. I was looking at my son. I was looking at my little baby boy. The baby immediately swaddled in love from family and friends. Even though they all knew he had died, they were there for us, but they were there to see him too. And it meant so much to us. Soon reality set in. About the time that we got his crib, we also uh, got his casket. On a chilly March day, this little casket on display. Shali had planned to recite a poem in her son's honor. She started to sing the song instead. I will carry you. It's a beautiful song. While your heart beats here. In the song it says, it's the mother you. telling the baby that I will carry you all my life, even though, even though the baby's not there. And I will praise the one who's chosen me. The baby's still a part of us, still in our heart. We'll never forget. We'll never forget our son. Four million babies nationwide are diagnosed with a genetic disorder each year. And as you can see from Israel's story, it can be emotionally trying for parents and loved ones. Israel and his wife want you to know that you are never alone and there is help out there. We have a list of resources on our website, WFMZ.com. Back to you. You hold that for mom? <laughs> Well, thank you. That's a good girl. Each year, she would be scared not to even go near Santa. Anybody in costume, um, she just gets frightened. But this year. All right, turn around this way so we put your coat on. Good girl. There's just one thing a mother wants for Christmas. Instead of the kicking and screaming and crying, you know, you just want that nice Santa picture. You ready to see Santa? <laughs> ready? There you go. <laughs> Santa, where's Santa? Santa is right here at the Lehigh Valley Mall. Big smile for Santa, okay? One more on the count of three. Waiting to meet four-year-old Jacqueline Hendershot. I just wanted her to have a picture with Santa and interact with him. Jacqueline's mom, Carrie. You give him a kiss? Are you going to give Santa a kiss? Val, this year would be picture perfect. Jacqueline was diagnosed with Down syndrome shortly after birth. She's mostly nonverbal. It's also sometimes more challenging for her to form connections that come naturally to other kids her age. No. You help, help Santa? So back at home, Jacqueline's parents Santa. have been helping yeah. their daughter Hugs and kisses. make friends with Santa Aww. by setting up these outdoor inflatable characters inside their Strasburg home. Santa get a hug? Oh, Santa gets kiss. Oh, the more she sees of Santa and acknowledges yeah. Santa, then, you know, the more she'd get used to it. All to get her ready for the big moment with the big man himself. Say hi. Hi, Jacqueline. Jacqueline's reaction to Santa. Yes. A repeat of last year. Yeah. Here you it's go, okay. pretty girl. It's all right. But soon, a mother's instincts kick in. Relax. Just relax. Mommy's yeah. right here. She's very sensitive to touch. All to make her daughter. Look up. Where's daddy? Where's dad? Beam. Where's daddy? This is everything I could have ever dreamed of. We have seven. Mama! Yeah. Hours upon hours of patience, learning, and love displayed proudly on the mantle. Oh, you made mommy proud today. And in the big picture, yeah. These are the gifts. Oh, I love you. You're a good girl. That truly make this season bright. In Stroudsburg, Hillary Lang, 69 News. All good welders know how important a strong bond is.
all good dads know it too. That was Jenny and that was Michelle. For 33 years, Jamie Cernival worked as a welder. Whether it was, you know, a billion degrees or negative degrees, he was always out there working hard. And all the while, he formed a bond so strong with his three girls, he put off his dream to make sure they got to chase theirs. When I finally realized what I really wanted to do, it was it was kind of a little late at that time. I had three daughters at the time. But then came a conversation over dinner one night with youngest daughter Erica. I remember that conversation. Who had just graduated with a degree in sociology, but realized her true calling was nursing. What I told Erica was, though, to, to do what she wants now. now. Now was the perfect time for her. To, uh, to reach out and you know, do her dreams, what she wanted to do. So Erica decided to enroll in Northampton Community College's esteemed nursing program, but she wasn't the only one. I wanted to go into nursing years ago. Turns out dad's longtime dream was also to be a nurse, and he took his own advice, and the father-daughter duo entered the program together. The school told us they couldn't remember that ever happening there before. In fact, they couldn't remember hearing about it anywhere else either. Very neat, very neat, if I, if I have to say. We really push each other. It's kind of like a little competition sometimes. It's always who's going to do better. I always do better, of course, but no. <laughs> Erica says dad's the role model in every aspect of her life, including what she looked for in a guy and found in her fiance. Caring, loving, puts you first. It's very supportive, and that's what he is. Erica Cernable. <laughs> and her father, Jamie Cernable. <laughs> And on Thursday, the school and this family doubled their pride as a father and daughter realized their dream together. For three decades, a father forged a strong family relationship. Now, he's forging a new path. I had somebody ask me one time, you know, do you regret not going back then? And I said, no, actually, because I had a chance to do both. I get a chance to be around, which was important to me, to, to, to be with the girls. And I get a chance to go back and do what I wanted to do now, too. In Brinningsville. I'm very proud of him. Joy Howe, 69 News.